Hi everyone. So in my previous videos, I've shown how to create a second GraphQL client from the Cypress test and use it to refetch data, create data. But here's something else we can do. Our application has its own GraphQL client, created right here. The application is using this client right here through use mutation, for example, to create new to-dos. So it literally, like we've done in our test, takes this client and executes client.query, client.mutate, and so on. So can we actually observe those calls to this object from our test? Yes, we can. So first things, we need to expose this object that is created by the application to the test. And we don't want to always expose it, so we'll just say if window Cypress, and let's give it a good name. So if the test is running the application, then it will set the client object, in this instance, on the window, okay, under the property GraphQL client, perfect. Now let's look at our spice pack and we'll say, okay, once you visit the page, it creates a window, it creates a client, which sets the property. So site visit actually yields the window object inside the application. So what we should check is we should check should have property graph client. Perfect. So we know that we now have access to that GraphQL client. So this will give us the client. Okay. And now we can, for example, spy on client mutation. Okay. So this is the method the application is calling every time it needs to change something. For example, if we say write test, you see that this spy is called because that's what application calls. So let's confirm this. We can say get element with class need to do, type test, enter, and this calls the mutate object. Maybe we want to confirm the GraphQL operation name. Maybe we want to confirm the variables used. Let's confirm the variables. So first we have to get our mutation spy that we saved under analyst. So if we get mutate spy, we can assert that it should have been called once. Perfect. Once this is called, right, we can say first call property, right, like this. Uh, it will have arguments. There's only one argument, an object, and inside we can confirm things. Now let's see if we can print this object. Okay, so cannot convert. It probably has some weird circular references, but we know what to expect because we can actually check it first. Uh, so we'll say, uh, oh, so we're getting the object and we say should equal, and for example, we can say the title is test. This is a big object of a call. We are interested only in the variables. Okay, so the application is passing the title and the use query already caches and creates the ID. So we don't know the ID, so we cannot say deep equal. We can say deep include. Okay. So this will confirm that this object actually has a property title of the value of test. And let's also confirm that there is an ID. And property ID. Perfect. So now what we've done, we are spying on a GraphQL client used by the application inside the iframe. We are creating an item and our spy is fired because the application called GraphQL mutate object, mutate method. We're getting the first call, we're getting the argument, variables object inside, we're confirming the things, the properties we know, and we confirm that it has a property ID, even if we don't know the value. 